Hey, welcome back. In this episode, you will learn about various administrative tasks for maintaining user accounts, including creating and managing user objects, assigning Office 365 licenses to your users, and recovering deleted user accounts. My name is Sushant Sudhish, and I am your trainer for this Microsoft 365 Security Administrator Associate Certification course. Let's have a high level look at the things you are going to learn in this video. After this video, you will be able to describe user identities in Microsoft 365. You will learn about how to create user accounts from both Microsoft 365 Admin Center and Windows PowerShell. You will be able to learn how to manage user accounts and licenses, recover deleted user accounts, and describe and use Microsoft 365 Admin roles, and will be able to describe the various types of groups available in Microsoft 365. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Microsoft 365 uses the cloud-based user identity and authentication service Azure Active Directory to manage users. Choosing which identity management solution you are going to use for your on-premises and Microsoft 365 is an early decision that is one of the foundation of your cloud infrastructure because changing this configuration later can be very difficult. So carefully consider the option to determine what works best for the needs for your organization. You can choose from two main authentication models in Microsoft 365 to set up and manage user accounts. They are cloud authentication and federated authentication. It's important to carefully consider which of these authentication and identity models to use to get up and running. Think about the time, existing complexity, and cost to implement and maintain each of these authentication and identity options. These factors are different for every organization and you should understand the key concepts for the identity option to help you choose the authentication and identity model you want to use for your deployment. So let's discuss some of the authentication option. The first one is cloud only. The cloud only identities are exactly as the name suggests. The user identity only exists in the cloud. So, so all password management and policy control are done through Azure AD. The second option is directory synchronization with pass through authentication. This authentication option provides a simple password validation for Azure AD authentication services. Another option is using single sign-on with Active Directory Federation services or SSO with ADFS. The SSO option hand over authentication control to your directory service. Therefore, users no longer authenticate against Azure AD, but against your ADFS. So how can you create these user accounts? Depending on your needs, you can use some of these following methods. First, you can create in Microsoft 365 Admin Center. This is a simple web interface for individually creating and managing users. It is also available as an app for mobile devices or tablets as Microsoft 365 Admin app. Second option is import multiple users. This option provides a method for bulk importation of multiple users into your Microsoft 365 Admin Center through comma separated value or CSV files. The third option is Windows PowerShell. You can use command list based and script based interface to create and manage single or multiple users. And the last option is directory synchronization. This option requires you to provision and manage users by synchronizing Microsoft 365 with an on-premises directory service such as Active Directory. You can use Azure AD Connect tool to synchronize on-premises Active Directory objects with Azure AD in Microsoft 365. The most common and easiest way to create user account in the non-directory synchronized environment is to use your Microsoft 365 Admin Center or Microsoft 365 Admin App. So let's understand how can you manage user accounts and licenses. Managing user accounts involves managing several account settings such as assigning administrator roles, setting users, sign-in status, specifying user location settings, 
and assigning licenses. Regardless of the method that you use to provision the user account, you can manage these user settings in using Microsoft 365 Admin Center or PowerShell commandlets. You can select a user and you can go to the settings and you can pretty much manage everything from this particular window. Account tab will give you all the information about modifying the user account. Devices give you information about what all devices this user used to log into the services. And licenses and apps is where you come and modify the location of the user and which licenses you would like to assign for that particular user. You can practically delete a user account from this window as well. That's, that's how you can remove a user from a directory. Let's understand the administrator roles available. In Microsoft 365, you use administrator role to assign specific administrative functions to users. Each admin role maps to common business functions and provides people in your organization permissions to do specific tasks in Microsoft 365 Admin Center. So within your Microsoft 365 Admin Center, you can select a user and you can click on roles and select the manage roles. This will give you an indication of what the admin role currently is. If you want to provide an admin role, you can select the admin role options and you can select basically any admin roles available in this section. Additional admin roles such as compliance administrator and company administrator are available out only but are managed using either the Office 365 Security and Compliance Admin Center or using Windows PowerShell. All admin roles are not mutually exclusive, but they can be combined, but can assign one or more admin roles to a user, such as the Exchange Admin, SharePoint Admin, or User Management Administrator roles. Now let's understand groups. Office 365 Group is the foundational membership service that drives all teamwork across Microsoft 365. With Office 365 Groups, you can give a group of people access to a collection of collaboration resources for those people to share. You can find the groups within Microsoft Admin Center by going into Groups. You can use Groups to give access to a shared Outlook inbox, a shared calendar, a SharePoint document library, a planner, Power BI, Yammer, Team, or a roadmap as well. With Office 365 Group, you don't have to manually assign permission to each of these resources because adding people to the group automatically gives them the permission they need to use the tools that the group provides. Any Office 365 user can create a group unless you limit group creation to a specific set of people. And groups have following roles as well. When you create a group, you can create groups based on the roles such as owners, members, and guests. Only global admins, user admins, and group admins can create and manage groups in Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Now that we have understood what are groups and users, in the next episode, we are going to learn about password management. So I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.